This is Twit. So, um, uh, I, it's hard not to start with uh, anything but Starship test flight number six, which number was six. not a catch this time, but they did hit some other milestones. Yeah, in, in the, so it's, it's, it's in the can. SpaceX has launched their sixth uh, 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 test flight for Starship. It was um, uh, uh, a pretty good success. Now, as you mentioned, uh, they did not actually uh land or catch the rocket the the super heavy booster they actually said they were go for it and then i guess at the last second there was some commit criteria that went red and so they just i i read about that it was that the uh or elon made a a statement about that later it was that the rocket apparently lost telemetry with the uh with the mechazilla yeah yeah so basically it couldn't talk to the landing pad anymore right yeah, and and so so they decided just to go ahead and divert, you know, and and it went out, did a, a pretty smooth soft landing. We got video of it here. Uh, if you're watching the stream uh, uh, later of it, like launching into space, gorgeous, gorgeous day. Mm. Uh, they launched at 5 p.m. at night Eastern time, which was the first time they've done like an evening launch, which was great because for the first time we saw the Starship land in daylight in in, in the Indian Ocean, which was absolutely uh, spectacular. It took about an hour uh, as, the, as the light. It was the very same profile as Flight 5. So everything else seemed to go well. They tested new um, new bits of, of, of heat shielding uh, uh, in different places to record the heat there. They did use an older type of heat shield. They said that the new one, Flight 7, will have a new different design of, of flaps uh, that are, are going to be a little bit better on the heat resistant uh, on the way down but it was interesting to me that they didn't have any burn through that i could see that we've seen on the last the last couple flights and they put heat shielding in what looked like um where you would expect windows to be which i thought was pretty interesting like are they testing for like what the windows are going to have to you're talking about extend. up in the, the up nose, on the, 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 the nose yeah and ask me about bananas uh rod <laughs> Tell, do you have any bananas today? Yeah, well, SpaceX sure does, yeah. because for the first time they launched a payload on Starship, and again, Starship is like the world's biggest rocket. It's four hundred feet tall. It's like bigger than the, it's and more I power. Tell you, man, seeing that shot. So I, I don't remember seeing a shot of the interior of, yeah. of, of ship, the upper stage before. But it's the banana was the only thing that gave it any perspective. It's really large. <laughs> it's their first payload, and they sent up a stuffed banana for scale. And and you have to imagine this massive cavernous space with a single banana suspended by four different cables inside. That's what they did. That was their first payload. And they said it was good practice to going through the FAA about uh, how to go approve payloads. And um, they also had the little Pez dispenser spit out to, uh, a structure that they're going to use to stack all the starships or Starlinks on in mm. the future. And then the starship is going to just spit them out like a Pez dispenser uh, instead of releasing them all in a big stack. So so they did a lot of that. They also relit the the, the Raptor engine for the first time uh, in like near orbital in speeds. Yeah, yeah. In, in a vacuum. Uh, and they had a very smooth like landing. Like they, they, they were able to t- touch down in the, uh, uh, the Indian Ocean as planned. So very smooth flight. I think uh, it would have been nice to see uh, the super heavy booster uh, like get get caught. We're, we're seeing video of it here now of its soft landing in the ocean. And the sad part is that right after SpaceX cut away from the super heavy booster splashing down, um, it exploded like in a wonderful fireball. <laughs> and they cut away before we could watch it happen. So, um, but there there are photos of it that Getty and, and other folks took. So it's pretty good. It's pretty good to see. So That's I think true. it's a big notch. They got FAA approval for 25 flights at least next year. So, all right. And and just to, to put a point on that, there have been other rocket engines that reignited in a vacuum before. Uh, I mean, as early as certainly Apollo, when the upper stage and the S4B had to reignite. Yeah. But they had not done it with this engine. Exactly. So yeah. that's something that has to be proved before you can move forward with the most of the intended missions for Starship. And it would not surprise me if we see an orbital flight before this year is out, or at least an attempt, you know, uh, where they really? actually circle the planet. Yeah. Yeah, there's the the year is still young. They got a month left. They got a bajillion of those starships and super heavies at Starbase right now. So um, we'll have to see That's how true. it all shakes out. Yeah. That's true. It looks like an old uh, a Ford lot. And um, I, I, will, I will say one last thing. They said yeah. during the broadcast they are looking at being able to pump out um, uh, a a ship every eight hours eventually at Starbase. Can you well, imagine that? Every no, eight hours. Uh, frankly, I can't. Twenty and twenty ships a month. Well, 
recently said they wanted to do 400 launches in three years i think it was yeah it is insane i mean if they're, if they're able to hit that rate so yeah bully to them but uh let's ask the people down at boca chica how they feel about that speaking yeah. of which the faa which has been i wouldn't say glacial but kind of molasses like in terms of granting these flight licenses which are kind of important and they're not the only agency they have to deal with down at starbase yeah. they have to deal with fish and game and FCC and others, but FAA has kind of been the big one, appears to have changed their tune, maybe because they see an incoming administration that could say, hey, step it up. What do you think? Well, an incoming administration that's going to say, hey, step it up, but also a, a dire need by NASA to to have these test flights complete so they can launch these these flights over over time so by, by the way both of these 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 stories are all from space.com but uh, i mean you can find them from your preferred space news you know hopefully <clears throat> space.com but uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah the on wednesday so one day after spacex's successful flight six launch uh the faa put out uh, a new draft environmental assessment it's 160 pages um that says that instead of um spacex's kind of current license which says that they can launch five starships uh, a year uh now they're they're gonna uh increase that up to um 25 at least uh and so that kind of gives them like a note that's easily two flights a month right mm -hmm. uh to to be able to uh ramp up their 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 testing and they they might have gotten a bit of a uh, uh a bit of a, a a nod from their most recent flight five flight six where they had a license for multiple launches as long as the, the profile uh wasn't too different and and the um there weren't any any strange anomalies so so it does seem like there's a bit more relaxing of the rules now that they've got uh, uh six of these under their belts to uh to say okay we understand what you're doing now you can go ahead with your testing campaign etc and because nasa really wants to land astronauts on the moon by um uh what is it by 2020 uh, uh six if they can and they they need how many did we say? 15, 12, like a bajillion, like, like a dozens of the tanker flights <laughs> of these tanker flights, at least. And of course, you're going to need another order of magnitude of testing. The smallest flights. number I've seen is 15. The highest number I've seen in print was 24. Yeah, that's, that's a lot, a of, lot of orchestrating. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, and, and it's not just Boca Chica alone. This this slice, this is these are from South Texas. This FAA document is about launching from Starbase. SpaceX has already built a tower or they're, they're finishing the tower at the Kennedy Space Center where they have a lot more flexibility about when and how often they're, they're going to be able to launch. Mm -hmm. As long as they have the range, there's more complexity there because they're not the only game in town. You've got your ULAs, you've got your, your, your Space Forces there uh, that they're going to have to deal with. Okay, but, but, but let's be honest for a second. How often are they going to have to stop for ULA launch? I'm not besmirching ULA, but at this point it's like, oh, it's the 42nd of November. I guess we have to stand down for a ULA launch. Well, well, I mean, also, also you got new blue origin coming in with new Glenn right True. out of there. So, uh, so, so there is that too. So, yeah, uh, that'll be exciting to, to see. They might have to wait once a year. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out this week in space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app or see the link in the description below. See you there.